Welcome to the Aesthetic Doctor Podcast. We don't shy away and keep secrets here. We empower you with education, telling you the truth about all things aesthetic medicine while encouraging you to be the best version of yourself. It's time to look great and feel good doing it. This is your host, mom, speaker, and board certified physician, Dr. Judith Borger. Hello, friends. This is Dr. Borger, and welcome to another episode of the Aesthetic Doctor Podcast. This is another beautiful day in North Carolina, and I hope that you guys are all enjoying 2022 as much as I am. Can you believe it's 2022? And with the new year, seeing that it's relatively early in the year, I think all of us have the best intentions. We always look to be the best version of ourselves. So today we're going to talk about habits. And we all know the power of habits. The fact that if you can do something every single day, the effect really compounds and builds up. So that really small changes that you do on the daily magnify, become powerful, become cumulative. And then once you make it a habit, really just become a part of you, become a part of your life. With that being said... Today, I'm going to talk about eight habits for healthy skin. I talk a lot on the podcast about aesthetic procedures, and today we're going to talk about habits, habits that don't cost you a thing. So there's really not a reason to not do them. And this is really what you should do, first of all, as a good starting point, if you're not quite ready for aesthetic treatments. You might say, wow, I can do all these things to make my skin look great um, and healthy and glowing. But then also, if you're already getting aesthetic treatments, this is a wonderful way to enhance and prolong those treatments that you're already getting. And all of these treatments are free and simple, just quick steps. So why don't we all do them and we'll be on our way to our best skin in 2022. So here are my eight habits for healthy skin. Number one, don't smoke. And if you do, quit now. You know that smoking is one of the worst things you can do, not only for your cardiovascular system and lungs, meaning your heart and lungs, but also for your skin, causing premature wrinkling and aging. You know I'm a doctor. You know I have to tell you this. Nicotine, obviously what's in cigarettes, causes blood vessels to narrow, which basically means you reduce oxygen flow and nutrients to skin cells. In addition, a number of chemicals trigger molecular events that remodel or damage structures necessary for skin elasticity and health, which means that your skin is less elastic, less healthy, gets less oxygen and less nutrients. So it's kind of starts dying just a little bit. Also, we all know about the smoker's lines, which basically means that during the, what we shall call the act of smoking, taking that drag, you purse your lips, you sort of squint, and you get lines around the mouth and eyes from smoking. Other things that sort of you get as effects from smoking are that you get yelling of the fingers and nails, we've all seen that, discoloration of the teeth, and even a black hairy tongue. Long term, you get dry skin, uneven skin pigmentation, baggy eyes, a saggy jawline, and deeper facial wrinkles and furrows. I mean, I think we all have that picture in our mind of that old lady that has smoked sort of a pack of her Virginia Slims in the day and her kind of like wrinkly leathery kind of skin, yellow teeth, nicotine stained fingers. So don't smoke for your overall health because it's a risk factor for almost every disease that there's out there. Number two, limit your sugar intake. I love chocolate. I love chocolate. Oh my God. Any kind of chocolate. But I try to enjoy chocolate in moderation because sugar, such as cookies, chocolate, any kind of sugary foods, can lead to acne breakouts. Foods with a high glycemic index spike your blood sugar and activate hormones in the body that stimulate oil production in the skin. 
Our skin naturally produces oil called sebum to help keep the skin moisturized. However, if there's an excessive amount of oil on the skin, your pores can become clogged and cause acne breakouts. I think we've kind of all seen that, probably especially over the holidays. The other thing, though, that you might not know is that through a process called glycolation, too much sugar can cause skin-related wear and aging. When artificial and processed sugar enters our bloodstream, it will sometimes attach to collagen and elastin, which we all know are proteins in the skin, and starts to break them down. No, no. When this happens, the skin loses its elasticity and wrinkles begin to form. We don't want that. So excess sugars, excess wrinkles. Let's try to limit your sugar intake. I'll try to limit mine. It's not only good for my waistline, but it's also good for my skin. Number three, hydrate. Hydration with plenty of fluids not only keeps the moisture and plumpness in your skin, but it also aids in the body's digestion, circulation, absorption of nutrients, and excretions of toxins. Meaning keeps the beautiful moisture in, flushes the bad stuff out. What's not to love? Number four, try to stick to a good skincare routine. We know it works. Consistency is key for results. You need to make sure to use the best routine for your skin, meaning not all skin routines are good for all kinds of skin. We do complementary skin type solution skin analysis at Concierge Medical Arts. We even do them remotely with our amazing medical estheticians. Each skin is different, so using the right products for skin is important. I would rather have you use three correct products consistently than this hodgepodge of random products that may not interact well. And we all know this, right? Most people I know have this sort of skincare drawer or skincare drawers in their house where there's like an assortment of the random stuff that they've picked up at Sephora or Ulta or wherever they like to shop. And now it just sits there and then every day at will, sort of randomly, they're like, oh, today let's do the green serum and today let's try this blah, blah, blah. And that's not what works. What works is to find out what your skin, based on your skin type needs, and then to be consistent with those products. As I said, I'd rather have you use three products that are good for your skin than going to dive in your drawer products and, you know, just picking something random for the day. That might work for your closet and your outfits for the day, but really not for your skin. Plus, it's actually a lot cheaper to invest in three good products because think about how much money is really sunk in that drawer of stuff. Of course, we know that moisturizing your face helps to protect the skin's barrier from irritation. A good moisturizer boosts hydration in your skin, prevents flaking and dullness, and creates a protective layer of moisture for your skin. Number five, wear sunscreen. Always wear sunscreen. Wearing sunscreen is probably the single most protective and important thing long term you can do for your skin. So we know that sunlight consists of two different types of harmful rays that reach the earth, UVA rays and UVB rays. Overexposure to either can lead to skin cancer. In addition to causing skin cancer, here's what each of these rays do. UVA rays, we can also think about them as A for aging rays. They can prematurely age your skin, causing wrinkles and age spots, and they can pass through window glass. Like if you're inside, if you're driving in your car, your skin still gets exposed to those rays. UVB rays, B for burning, are the burning rays. They're the primary cause of sunburn and they're blocked by window glass. UV radiation from the sun and artificial sources such as tanning beds and sun lamps has been classified as a known cancer-causing substance or a carcinogen by both the United States Department of Health and Human Services as well as the World Health Organization's International Agency of Research on Cancer. So UVA rays are the ones that cause aging, wrinkling, and loss of elasticity. However, UVA also increases the damaging effects of UVB. 
including skin cancer and cataracts. In most cases, UV rays react with melanin. Basically, your melanin is your first defense against the sun because melanin absorbs the dangerous UV rays that can do serious skin damage. A sunburn develops when the amount of UV damage exceeds the protection that the skin's melanin can provide. A sun tan represents the skin's response to injury from the sun. Of course, a small amount of sun exposure is healthy and pleasurable, but too much can be dangerous. Measures should be taken to prevent overexposure to sunlight, such as sunscreen, sun protective clothing, hats, and these protective measures can reduce the risk of cancers, premature aging of the skin, the development of cataracts, and other harmful effects. The single most important thing you can do is to wear SPF 30 each day, reapply every two hours, and no, your makeup sunscreen isn't enough. And I will probably have a whole episode on why your makeup sunscreen is not enough, but just trust me on this one. Talking about makeup, number six of our habits for healthy skin, take off your makeup each night. I know sometimes you just get so tired, you just want to fall into your bed and just not do another single thing. But please, please, please take the 30 seconds or a minute to wash your makeup off with water and a cleanser or even micellar water. Sleeping with makeup can lead to clogged pores, bumps, uneven skin tone, and acne breakouts. Makeup can also trap environmental pollutants and free radicals that can damage skin cells, including collagen, leading to premature skin aging. Plus, your pillowcase gets all yucky, and it's just, it's just gross. Number seven, limit your stress. Take some me time. You've made it through the holidays. They can be so busy and stressful, which is not only taxing on your mental health, but can lead to flare-ups in a variety of skin conditions such as eczema, rosacea, and acne. As a resolution for 2022, please show yourself some love. Please honor yourself and take some me time. Deep breathing, mindfulness, meditation, walks, prayer, exercise, even a brisk walk outside can reduce stress levels dramatically and allow you to enjoy life even more. A facial is another wonderful self-care act that helps relaxation, stress relief, as well as bringing out your most glowing skin. Here is number eight of our habits for healthy skin. Get enough sleep. Yes, you've heard it here. Get enough sleep. Skin repairs itself at night. Cell turnover refers to the process of producing new skin cells, which travel from the deepest layer of the skin to the outermost layer of the skin. The dead cells are shed off and replaced with new healthy ones. This is a process that happens overnight. And during this overnight process, you also build collagen, elastin, and hyaluronic acid. The molecules responsible for skin's plumpness, translucency, and elasticity. Keeping your skin plump and firm helps premature aging, such as wrinkles and sagging. Furthermore, increased levels of the sleep hormone melatonin acts like an antioxidant, which fights age spots, fine lines, and even skin cancer. Ample rest may be the closest thing to the fountain of use and one of the best benefits of sleep for your skin. Sleep deprivation also causes a decrease in blood flow to the skin surrounding your face. During overnights, there is an increased blood flow to the facial area. Your body uses its time resting to pump oxygen to your complexion in order to breathe out pollutants and free radicals that accumulate during the day. This helps repair any damage incurred, restores your complexion, and provides a radiant, colorful glow. Also, sleep deprivation suppresses immune system functioning. We all kind of know that. We are run down, we're worn out, and then we get something on top of that, whether that's a cold or virus, because we just don't have the energy in our body to fight it. Those who suffer from cystic acne should make a special note regarding this lack of sleep's effect on skin. Deep acne lesions are caused by infection of P. acne's bacteria, which is harder to fight off when immunity is weak. 
getting enough sleep can improve your skin's health by reducing inflammation, in addition to making you more resilient to colds and viruses. And we know winter is really the time. Of course, COVID is still a thing. So let's make you as resilient as you can possibly be. Also, when you're tired or overtired, cortisol is a stress hormone that plays a role in sleep and skin appearance, and it's produced in higher concentrations when you're tired. Basically, if you have high levels of cortisol, which is what happens when you're stressed or sleep deprived, you have worsening of inflammatory skin conditions such as acne or psoriasis and You also have more oil leading to clogged pores and breakouts. So you heard it here. These are our eight healthy habits for your best, healthiest skin. Let me quickly run through them again in summary. Number one, don't smoke. Number two, limit your sugar intake. Number three, hydrate. Number four, try to stick to your skincare routine. Number five, wear sunscreen. Number six, take off your makeup each night. Number seven, limit your stress. And number eight, get enough sleep. Please tell me how you are incorporating all these steps and habits into your daily life. I hope this was a useful episode for you. I wish you your most fabulous and glorious 2022, my friends. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Aesthetic Doctor Podcast with Dr. Judith Borger. We'd love to connect with you outside of the show. Follow Dr. Borger on Instagram at Dr. Borger and find more online and ways to work with Dr. Borger at www.theaestheticdoctor.com. Until next time, be well.